very grateful very grateful to be with you tonight um appreciative of everybody tuning in and that we can educate you just a little bit about the turkey program and turkeys in general um i would like where we have a smaller group either if you'd like to unmute your microphone or else use the chat um, I'd like to see, are you guys all from Rich County or do we have some that are joining from different spots in the, if you want to maybe chat, will you type in the chat where you guys are joining from really quick. Oh, cool. Okay, we've got some from Utah County. Good, some from Rich County, perfect. All right, go ahead. If you, have, if you haven't already, go ahead and respond into that. And we'll just keep, I wanted to um, be able to present and then have some time for questions. I don't wanna take much time in your evening, but we'll make sure to hopefully be able to satisfy all the curiosity that you have about the turkey program and um, kind of instruct you just a little bit about what it is that we do. Um, some fun facts for you about turkey production in Utah. In Utah, a million turkeys raised and, and that's done commercially, okay? So that's a lot of turkeys. In fact, if you think about that in pounds, that's over 90 million pounds of turkey that's produced in Utah, okay? Um, predominantly, down in San Pete County and some of the other surrounding, we have our largest uh, turkey commercial production. Um, and then to kind of give you a bit about where we are as far as the Utah Junior 4-H and FFA Turkey Show, on average, we're producing about 3,000 to 3,300 uh, turkeys each year. Um, so we're just a small grain of sand compared to the 5 million that are but I think it's really important that we talk about uh, Utah as being quite productive when it comes to turkeys. I don't think oftentimes we really think about Utah as being a heavy contender in turkey production. However, we're, we're up there and we have a large turkey processing plant that's there in San Pete County and Moroni. Um, and if you guys have ever heard of the turkey brand Norbest, that is uh, what down there in, in San Pete County. So some of the things that I wanted to do uh, just up front about the process of getting started. So you guys actually firsthand information before anybody else does. Um, this will probably be coming out tomorrow, uh, but the Polt order deadline. And so just to give you what a Polt is, some of you may not be familiar, but that's what we call a baby turkey. So a Polt, um, is uh, you can have a tom poult or a hen poult, okay? And the toms are the males and the hens are the females. So uh, the poult orders, what we do is you, you have you would like, that has to be uh, to the Utah Junior Turkey the money that you'll pay for those poults before the 3rd of May. And if it, if it arrives after that, they, they will not accept it. So you have to make sure that you get that right now. And we're gonna show you um, where you can actually find order form here in just a minute, okay? Now, each youth actually order up to 20 poults, okay? So you can, you can order, you can order five, you can order up to 20. It just depends on how many you would like to order. Uh, but the poults cost a, a three fifty each. Okay, so that's just some up right now. We'll kind of talk a little bit more about the process, but I wanted to get that in your mind right now. Um, just where I mean, we're we still seem like we're far away from May, but it'll sneak up on us. So those of you that are interested, just keep that date in the back of your minds. So we're gonna that we would want to have ready and about raising turkey poults and how and how that so the the first thing that we need is we need a, a brooder okay 
And this is an example right here of a brooder that we have in our garage. It's actually a round ring. And, and what it is, is it's a, it's a uh, tartar water trough, a three water trough that doesn't have a bottom in it. So those of you that maybe have some round types of troughs, those, those work really nice for brooders. Um, it's preferred if you're making a brooder that actually is round because then it doesn't allow for the pulse to be able to get up into a corner and get smothered by the other pulse. Um, they can sometimes do that. When things are round, it tends to alleviate those types of problems. And so that's what's recommended as far as a brooder. And a brooder essentially is the, the facility that you're going to have those pulse in for a certain amount of time. Now, pulse not generate their own body heat very well. Um, in fact, a in, the, in the wild, naturally, the, the hen turkey would actually uh, sit on them and allow them to share her warmth from her feathers and be able to regulate that um, that way. But where we're eggs and we're bringing them home, uh, they need a heat source. And so that generally comes in the form of a heat lamp like this, or even nowadays, they have the really cool radiant heaters uh, put in and they they uh, they provide the heat source that's necessary. Now interestingly enough uh, a turkey poult when it's a day old needs about a 99.5 temperature okay and that's pretty important um, for about the then as it gets as we get through that first week we can actually start to decline the temperature for them by about five degrees each week until they're fully feathered. Which happens on average, it just depends on the year, but about eight to 10 weeks. Uh, they generally don't need the heat source anymore. Uh, they can self-regulate as far as their temperature is concerned and they, and they do fairly well that way. So um, one of the things that men that you think about um, in your brooder is you can get on Amazon and buy um, you can buy you a temperature thermometer um, that can sit there in your brooder and you want that to uh, be able to communicate maybe to a reader. Some, some fancy ones they can communicate to your phone, but you want to make sure that those pulse temperature that's uh, agreeable to them. And you also don't want them to get too warm. Uh, when we get these pults, we're going to get them in the in the latter part of July, the, the heat of the summer. The nighttime, it's going to be too cold, but sometimes in the day, you might be watching your thermometer in your brooder off for just a little bit. Um, speaking of that temperature, uh, pults need to be able to self-regulate on that. So you want to make sure you have a brooder that that if they're cold, they can move themselves more towards right under that heat lamp. And if they're too warm, they can kind of self-regulate and move away. Okay, so that's a lot of information heat, uh, but it's one of the most important factors in the in the early stages of pulp production, um, just to make sure that they can have that that needed heat source that's necessary for them to be able to be happy and to grow. You're also going to want in your brooder uh, shades. They need to be placed on the ground and those shavings help to maintain heat, but they also help to maintain cleanliness. And you'll notice that depending on the size of your brooder, you'll, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly to change those shavings out and keep those turkeys clean. Uh, the cleaner that we keep their pen facilities, the less problem that we have with disease and the less problems that we have with uh, their, their over product to their look. Um, if we get them too dirty and nasty, they as good of a look to them um, when they're processed and, and ready to dinner. So we want to make sure that we keep them, keep them as uh, clean as we possibly can. Being circular. Um, but in to on top of these shavings right here, you make sure things that we want to have for them. We want to have a clean watering system. Um, and right here you can see, um, we want to have these kind of a chick or a pulp watering system so that they can get just enough water. It keeps it full for them and fresh, but not too deep that they can be drowning themselves or causing some problems that way. You don't want to put a big bowl or a dish or anything in there, water that's too deep. You want it to just be a, 
one of these poultry types of watering systems. Next thing right over here that you're going to want to have is a feeder. Um, this one uh, uses gravity to feed little slots right here, um, and it allows that to get to maintain and stay full for those those poults so that they can actually um, stay and feed. Now feed is really interesting. Um, the demand for the protein percentage of turkey poult feed is higher and it kind of decreases as they get a little bit more mature. Um, so generally starting out, uh, we want to feed the turkey poults a 28% protein. Um, and then as they start to feather out and grow, that, that decreases. And while we when we decrease the protein, increase the, the fat percentage. Now, there's lots of different op options for um, you can get them from a lot of the different uh, feed stores and they all work really good. This is a really, really good turkey feed that, um, that they make and mix over in Walt feed. And it's been one that's been used by the turkey program for a long time. Uh, Bear River FF uh, helps to get that ordered and is a good resource to, to pick it up from. And you can get it in large quantities from them for those of you that live farther away if needs be, and if not, uh, the other feeds have been just as good and been just as competitive, uh, but that one's just, are struggling to find a, a place that has good turkey feed. So before we move on from, does anybody have any questions about being ready to receive these poles? Having a brooder, a heat source, shavings, clean water, and feeder, and, and ready to go with that type of thing for, for their arrival. Any far as that's concerned. Okay, if you do have something that comes to mind, don't be afraid to put it in the chat or unmute, that's not a problem. Um, when you get them, <clears throat> you're gonna want to make sure everybody be checking on them quite frequently. Uh, sometimes we have poults that like to. I have. Yes. Go ahead. How much room do you need per turkey? So are you talking Did adult you turkey or 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 baby turkey? Probably adult because we'll raise the baby turkey to an adult. So I just wondered how big of a cage or space one needs. So generally, it's about six square feet of space is what you want for the adults. For the little ones and the brooder, as long as they can really stay in the temperature, you're okay. But for the bigger adults, you're gonna want about six square feet of space per bird. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. After you've gotten these turkey poults going, for the first couple of days, you're gonna to wanna to go out and make sure that you're checking on them, temperature checking. We're gonna to wanna to keep feeding waters full and then there always happen to be one or two you'll find that want to be the, the birds that want to flip over. And what that means is they'll sometimes get on their back and they just can't seem to be able to get back up on their own. Now, sometimes if they get themselves right on, flipped over on their back, if they can't self-regulate in temperature, that could accidentally cook them or cause them to get really dehydrated very quickly. And so it's really important that you're constantly and, and making sure that they're okay that way. Um, constantly checking on them, especially for that of life, um, is, is really important. Um, and it really mitigates when you're doing constant, a lot of death loss. We don't see a lot of that for people that are checking them a lot, uh, quite often. Before we move on, we've got, um, some questions here. Uh, how long is it to get them? So generally, like I said, the, the deadline this year is May the 3rd for the poll order. And we normally get them the last week of July, generally around like the 30th of July. I think that's a Friday this year and that's when we get them is on that Friday. So we have to have enough time to let the, let the uh, hatchery know how many we need. And then we um, then they have an algorithm and make it work. And then we, are, we receive those on that, that time. Generally, we have either FFA or 4-H um, members or uh, staff that'll go down to where the poults are delivered home to you. Um, here in Box Elder, for example, we keep in contact with everybody. We let them 
that's going to happen. And we let them know that our estimated time arrival is X amount of time at the fairgrounds. So everybody's there waiting and we show up with the poults and the poults get divvied out and they go, they go and leave there and go into their breeders. So that's, that's perfect. And we have a question that says, what do we use them for? I'm assuming you're asking, what do we use the turkeys for? So the turkeys are, are used for, for meat production and we raise them enough and we get them right at the road where um, oftentimes more than not, these, these birds are ready perfectly for Thanksgiving dinner, okay? So again, keep a good eye on your poults when you get them because that's gonna make a big difference in the six project. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about moving out of the brooder. And this goes along with the question that we just answered about the ideal pen space is square, six square feet per turkey. Um, building these pens that you need to be thinking about is you need to be aware of predators. Things can't, raccoons, dogs, uh, things like that can't get underneath them uh, over your pen. Um, we like to actually use the cattle panels and then we like to put smaller paneling so they can't get in and out um, below and on the inside of those big panels. And the reason why those big panels is because we want to make sure that we don't get dogs or other things that, that would fun to tear up into a turkey. We want to prevent them from getting over. Um, sometimes we actually even will lock our birds up into either a big uh, coop or a uh, a uh, more secure pen at night that has a cover over the top of it as well it, any critters getting in and harming them because uh, at that point especially when they're younger once they're feathered out and you're first initially getting them out there small enough that a raccoon a skunk a fox something like that that can easily get in there could could cause a lot of damage so you want to make sure that you're you're not only building something that's going to hold your turkeys but it's also to prevent things from getting in there um, Feeding and watering at this point are key. You want to have clean waterers, uh, cleaning them out often because the birds will drink more and consequently when they want to drink more, more. But this project really, in comparison to a lot of other of our 4-H and FFA animal projects, it's not as, uh, I wouldn't say, I would say it's just not as uh, intense as far as to do a uh, train your steer to do showmanship or train your hog to walk or train your lamb to drive. You're just trying to get a big nice turkey uh, that's going to dress out and, and look really nice as far as its carcass merit and quality. And you do that through really good feed, good water, and a good shelter and bedding. Doing those, doing those simple things at this point, especially when you get them out of the brooder, are what's going to make a big difference. Now one of the tip, the tricks that you can utilize as your turkeys start to, to grow eat more and, and, and eat better is to raise their feed and waterers to about chest height. Um, you can do that. We use cinder blocks at our house, uh, but you can raise those up so that it's easier and drink. And um, I've also seen people, they'll have feeders that'll, uh, that are the sides of the, of the pen so that they can be moved up as well. But that's just a really good growth and, and getting them to be um, a finished product turkey. You can see right here, this is a picture of birds that were all um, the same age, but you can see what a uh, difference maybe are compared to this one, okay? And a lot of that has to do with that feed. It wasn't fed as consistently, uh, maybe didn't have the, the nutrients and things that the other one can see for being the same age and coming and arriving on the same day, which is what all of these poults will do, um, there's a big difference there in the overall final product there of the carcasses. So one of the fun things that you can do uh, as far as your turkeys are concerned is you can do some weight checks with them. Uh, we have done different variations of to see what's, uh, what's better. Um, you can do these hanging scale ones. This is just a simple luggage scale that you can get. This is a digital one. Uh, you can put them on a digital uh, scale that they just stand on. Maybe put them in a basket like this is done here. But it's kind of fun to be able to do those weight checks because then you can start to disturb, decide if you participate in the state turkey show, which ones you might want to bring. Now right here, a example of the state turkey show and actually right here is the judge 
that year. That's Dr. Lynn Bagley from Norbest down in San Pete County. And Dr. Bagley goes through and after the turkeys are processed or the process judges them, just like you see them here on the table. He'll go through and start to sort out the ones that he gets to the top. Um, if you'd like to participate in the turkey show, um, you're allowed to participate with one tom and one hand. So you can enter one tom and one hand into the show. Um, the top 30 tom, 30 hands that are selected, um, they, they earn the right to be able to the next day in the um, June, that's actually all held up in Box Elder County. That's where the processing plant is also held. Uh, but on average, kids do really good that make that sale. There's a lot of really good support there for the state turkey sale um, and something that makes it kind of fun for to try and get, get a bird into the sale and, and um, be able to sell it. They allowed one animal, one bird in the sale. So if you have a tom and a hen that actually place in the top 30, whichever one places higher will actually bump the lower one out. So you'll only be able to sell one. Um, but you have the opportunity to either take the other one home to you and your family or you have the opportunity to maybe sell or that's interested in a fresh turkey. Do we have any questions as far as the weights are concerned or even the turkey sale and how that works? So the question came through right here, what do they do with the carcasses after judging? That's a really good question. We actually have a the art facility that uh, we utilize and we will put them in a really nice bag. They're, they're handled just right how they ought to be. Uh, the bag is shrink wrapped and then it's placed into a temperate cooler um, that keeps them at the right time to be, to, to be able to store. Um, and again, the ones that make the sale will go to the ones that don't um they were they're picked up on that saturday and and take it good question any other questions about that good question there's one that says can you keep some alive and not kill them in the junior turkey show program all of the birds that are ordered actually have because it's an agreement that the Junior Turkey Board has with the Utah Department of Food and Ag. Um, your own turkey poults from a local feed store, IFA, Tractor Supply, all those different places like that, Ranch, um, and you can do whatever you would like with those. But if you order the poults through this program, they have to come to the turkey processing. Have to participate in the state show and sale. That's not a requirement. Uh, but it is a requirement to have them processed. Now, the birds that don't participate in the, sh in the show and sale, those are processed the next week, which is actually even closer to Thanksgiving, and you can utilize them for a home user to sell for that, for that purpose. Okay, good, good question. So we like to do research, and we do some fun things with the turkey program, and, and just research with some really cool uh, information. Um, and when we talk about weighing them, maybe side, you know, you have customers or family members that want birds that are a certain size in the bag for their thing. Um, we were able to do a study and found out that if you times this magic number, this uh, 78.5 or 0 0.785 uh, times the whatever that live can give you within about a half of a pound, uh, a guesstimate as to what your bird in a way when they're in the bag. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting is we, this is for Tom, found out that it's about 0 0.82. So if you times your hands by about 0 0.822, uh, you're going to get an estimate between, uh, within plus or minus of a half of a pound of what they're gonna weigh and in the bag. And so that gives you a, just some ideas there as you're planning your project, some numbers. If you forget those and you're curious and please reach out, we can get those, uh, that information to you. But it was kind of a really neat thing. We did it with hundreds and hundreds of turkeys to be able to come up with a, with a really accurate statistic as far as what we times that by. And we thought that was kind of fun to, to utilize and give to you as 4-H and FFA members as a tool. I can see that uh, Christine Curry said that the broad-breasted turkeys won't live long anyway because they're, because they're extra large and they're meant for meat. And that's exactly right as well. 
Now, when I talk about dressing percentage, that's what, uh, when we dress an animal, when we talk about harvesting them, that's what's remaining. There, there is what is uh, remaining as far as the meat and the carcass. So after we remove different parts of the turkey, the, in, the entrails, so the intestines and those types of things, that is the, the pounds of product of actual meat and carcass that you're going to be able to have left and, and that you're going to sell. So if you go to the grocery store, for example, you're buying a bird that's in a bag and it weighs, it says on the tag, this dressing percentage is what you're going to calculate to see how much your uh, that half of a pound like we talked about there uh, when it's in the bag as well. And again, might consider doing that oftentimes my recommendation is most of the time you want to bring your biggest tom and your biggest hen to the state show because oftentimes bigger is better when it comes to the competition so you might want to weigh them that percentage and figure out where you're at that way uh, you also may be trying to figure out where you want birds to go you might have a neighbor that says i only want a 16 pound bird and so if that's the case you might make some adjustments to try and get as close as you can there good question uh, in order for you to stay updated on all this information, um, we do have a, a web uh, that's right here. If you just actually even want to search Box Elder 4-H, um, go to the market animal section, there's going to be a whole uh, list of turkey information. Tomorrow, the poult processing ordering form should be up, uh, the new updated one. Also find uh, the processing form that's required to be submitted before processing time in November. Um, and you can also find all the rules and regulations that apply to the state turkey show. Uh, there aren't very many of them, but it's just also nice if sometimes to read through those to see, um, to, to be updated on what, what might be in there as far as the show's concern and requirements. Uh, but we've talked about most of them already tonight. But I do encourage you to go find a lot of that information as far as the show's concerned on the website. And again, that ordering form, remember we talked about this, the 3rd of May um, is really important when it comes to, when it comes to a, a deadline. You want to make sure that you're even shooting before that. If you, if you know right now that you want to do turkeys, fill out, get that in to where it, uh, the, the form will tell you where to mail it and what to do. Uh, but get so we have a question about what type of, uh, what kind of turkeys we should get. So that's, a, that's actually a don't have uh, because they're all the same. And that's actually one of the things that's really cool about program is um, the turkeys are all from the same place. They're the same. So they're the, they're the broad-breasted white birds. Um, they, um, again, the, the only difference you have to make the decision on is how many toms versus how many hens that you would like. Um, Toms tend to eat a little bit more. They're a little bit bigger bird. They'll maybe be a bigger, bigger car touring bird. Um, hens don't maybe eat as much. Um, and there are going to be a your neighbors, your family that are interested in purchasing birds, and they say, gosh, we want a we want a 30 plus pound bird. Well, then you're going to want to order some toms versus people that say maybe they want something in a 16 to 20 pound range. May, maybe focus a little bit more on hens. So those are the things you want to consider. The other thing to consider is you, um, if you want to participate in the show and you want to have a shot at putting a tom and a hen in, you're going to want to make sure that you have a couple of, of each so that you have um, to compete there in that in those different categories of gender. Is if they lay eggs, can you hatch them? So these turkeys actually are. Um, they've actually been uh, genetic and, and, and just through natural selection, really, to where they have such odd breasts that they cannot reproduce naturally. Um, also, colts and, and, and juvenile turkeys that we will raise and harvest, they will not reach maturity to be producing eggs by the time we harvest them in November. They, they're two weeks old, really, when you think about first of August to the first part of November, mid-November, see them laying eggs. But if you did have a broad-breasted or a bronze-breasted or whatever you wanted, 
Um, if they're the broad-breasted type, uh, they generally produce naturally. They'll lay eggs, but they just won't be able to be fertilized. In fact, all of the turkey poults that you'll get from this um, for this project, they've been art the hens have been artificially inseminated to be able to lay fertilized eggs that are then put into incubators. Okay, good question. And it looks like we said uh, uh, people turkeys like hens that's right Christine sometimes they want them to be smaller and if they're too big they can't get them they can't get them into their cooking equipment that they would like to use and um, heritage that's right the heritage breeds they're more of the wild type breeds and they can reproduce on their own. they tend to be a lot more broody and 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 uh, able to fertilize their their eggs uh, whereas the other breeds cannot Josh yes time constraints and stuff for the kids you know as a, a parent starting a new project what what do we expect um you know processing time uh you know at the end of the contest and stuff what what so so have? there's not a time constraints the only time constraint as far as the show is concerned is if they if you bring the birds up, um, generally it's a it's a drop off. Uh, there's obviously some inherent plant, and so we don't generally like to have too too many people hanging around there. We do take volunteers, and we'll put them in different places, but that's not a requirement. Um, the The only thing required is if you do make the sale on that Saturday, and it's generally two Saturdays before Thanksgiving is that weekend that would be when you would be, that would be the time requirement is, and you would use the judging's over on Friday morning. Uh, the Turkey Committee will call and let you know that you've made the sale. Um, so you would just need to be planning on that if you wanted to. And again, it is not a requirement to enter into the So that's really the biggest time constraint there is. And then just the, just the time commitment of, of, you know, making sure you're taking care of them and feeding and watering them. Um, but as far as, again, as an project is concerned, it's a lot less invasive and a lot less hands-on than maybe some of the other projects. It's more about keeping a good clean pen and feeding and watering and, and doing those types of things. Does that help to answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah. And then Brandy's got a question here. She said, for clarification, if you purchase your turkeys from a somewhere other than the Utah Junior Turkey Show, they can't compete in the turkey show. And that's correct. One of the, the unique things about our show, again, is that everybody starts out on a level playing field. It doesn't matter if somebody's got $10,000 that they could spend on some real, real beefed up turkey poult that they think is really awesome. Um, it just doesn't work that way. Everybody gets Again, the same birds, they come from the same uh, stock and they all are the same age. And so in order to compete, you have to order through here and be a part of that. Um, and really what um, from the others is again, the husbandry of taking care of them, feeding them and, and just doing that just the right way to be able to grow the birds the way that you want them and, and get them to fill out and dress out the way that we the, the, the judge would like. Sorry, another quick question. Um, so if, if uh, my children get teen birds, deliver them to have them processed? That's a good question. So generally, we actually will travel in trailers, so livestock trailers, because they're big enough that they'll just sit in there. They're not going to fly. And you can put shade. We put shavings in trailers. And, and, and birds are, uh, we, have, we have a lot of counties, Wasatch County, Summit County. Utah County, Tooele, they are all, they all participate and they, and they'll trailer the birds. That's a good question. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide here because Christine had a question about um, can they be processed the week after? Local said they didn't, they did that last year. So here, here's how it is. Um, here's how, here's how this works. So this is our 2020 schedule, um, and I'm just going to bring that. I'm bringing that up just just for now, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So again, two Saturdays before the turkey show, you would process the birds on. We process them on a Thursday. They're judged on that Friday, 
And then that auction that we talked about is Saturday, okay? And that would just be for one tom and one hen if you prefer to compete. Now, let's say you decide I don't want to raise any. That's okay. You can still bring one hen if you would like, and that's that's just fine. Now is what we call the just the processing week. Okay, this is just simply where we're processing birds. They're not they don't have anything other than just the just the fact that they're being processed and and um, we do that. And and this is generally the schedule. And I believe we we had a board meeting, and I don't think the schedules get change. Uh, but Utah County uh, generally is on the Tuesday. Um, we do Cash Weber. I think that we would fit Rich in on this Wednesday. The 18th is when we would have Rich to come over. Um, some, some of what we what we identify as far as particip participation. Okay, uh, that would be on the 18th. Uh, 19th and 20th is Tooele, West Lake, Salt Lake, and Riverton. And then um, we actually do research birds. We have some research birds that we process on the 21st. And then Box Elder and Wasatch, actually our largest day, is on the 23rd. Um, Jenny has a good question. She says, how do you know whose is whose? And that's a really good Tag the birds um, when, right, either the night before of processing, they have a little button tag, like a, like a livestock tag, and they have this little spot in their wing that's just a flap of skin, and we actually tag them that way. And so... That there, there's a Google form that goes out. You, you actually fill it out with your personal information and the tag number, the birds that you have, and uh, all that's put into a database. And then as that bird actually comes through the process, you have a database uh, linked up to where when the carcass is weighed, um, it, it's identified. And then at the end, there's actually labels that are printed out. So the label will have the, it'll have how much the bird weighs, and all that information, um, and so that's how identified individually by tag. So every every bird has its own individual identification that goes through the plant. Good question. Uh, it says, um, could you bring more turkeys to be processed? So the answer is, is we really discourage uh, birds that aren't a part of the, just because of uh, the time frame that we have and the number of birds that were processed in a time frame. Sometimes if another, if a 4-H member happened to have a few, sometimes we can fit them in, but it's not a guarantee. We don't, we don't want to advertise that that's, that that's what we do. This is primarily a processing time for, for this, this project. Um, I'll, that, I'll just leave that at that, that we, we don't, again, we don't want somebody to want to buy in an extra 20 birds at IFA and thinking, oh, well, I'm going to bring them up to the, to the processing plan. If we do have room, uh, there is a, a larger fee that's charged as far as processing is concerned, and um, that it's uh, it's actually um, so any birds that are not 4-H or FFA, if they do come up and they do have to come up with permission. Again, we just don't take everything and anything, but if they do come up, they they're charged more if we have room and. Um, and so that's just something to be taken into consideration. A really good question. Research birds, um, we we do research again with the numbers that we were able to provide. Um, we we have a, a company that uh, actually purchases the bird, allows us to do um, about 400 birds. We've done feed trial studies to see which feeds work best. We've done studies to see about omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. If we, uh, we actually put flax seed in the feed and we're able to accomplish a particular transition of fat inside the turkeys, they, they change to omega-3 and omega-6 uh, turkeys, which is really cool, uh, just by eating flax seed. Um, and then we've done research to decide whether they like the granular feed versus the pelleted feed. We found out that they like the pelleted feed more but we also found that if you don't give them a choice, they'll eat anything anyway. Um, so we've been able to do a lot of different things with those research birds and it just uh, uh, is a validity for, for the research piece of, of the extension uh, scientific side of USU. Christine, we are in the process of publishing things. In fact, our first journal article is uh, submitted. It was submitted last week. 
<laughs> so that's a good question. And we're continuing the, the omega-3 and omega-6 stuff. We're writing about that right now and hoping to get that into the Journal of Animal Science. So that should be, that should be coming up in the next couple of months. The one that's published right now is more of the dressing percentages, um, which is really cool research because they, they have a lot of varying percentages um, all over and in journals. And these ones are a lot more specific as far as their, their power as, and their uh, statistics. Um, before I forget on this slide right here, uh, this is what the processing form looks like. Okay, you'll fill out how many you're going to bring. It does cost you eight dollars to process your bird, um, but again, that's that's having them ready to go and in the bag. Um, on average, you can uh, plan to sell and ask ask for dollars and fifty cents to three dollars a pound in the bag for birds for customers. Um, we do ask you, uh, we're required to ask after you've sold them for you to fill out a form when the Utah Department of Ag and Food like to track that, uh, which is really important uh, part of their requirements. Um, but uh, you, you generally can, can actually um, come out okay with the bird, uh, with selling the birds at that price. Um, and once you've had a fresh bird from the turkey plant for Thanksgiving, um, it's hard to ever want to eat anything else. They're they're really really delicious. Um, this breed of bird, especially being fed, you as 4-H and FFA members feed them, and then uh, being able to have that fresh uh, uh, bird in the oven and and eat that on Thanksgiving, it makes a huge difference in the taste. So, okay. So with that, I think I've covered just about everything as far as the project is concerned. Are there any other questions? Your microphone's on, um, or go ahead and type anything into the chat and helpful and been able to answer a bunch of your questions. But you know, all in all, um, really, really good project. Um, it's short term, like we talked about. Um, you start about the first part of August and you're done by the first part of November. You can do 20 if you want to, but you can also do four or five. And they just don't require a lot of space. They're, again, they're not permanent. It's, it's, it's pretty easy to do overall. And it's, and it's a lot of fun. Um, turkeys are pretty durable. And you, as long as you like fundamental things I talked about, you'll, you'll find success and um, you'll be able to have, have a lot of fun with them. So Jenny, the reason why you can't do more than 20 is we, we have to be able to cap how many we're processing. Um, we're there for almost two full weeks out there and it just becomes almost unbearable if we were to allow any more than that. So that's just kind of the cap that they're putting on, on, on per exhibit. But that's a good question. Questions? Josh, for the Rich County kids, um, just so that you know, if we get multiple orders, um, we will, um, as an office, we will help to get the pults picked up. And um, if we need to, uh, we can kind of carpool the, the birds over to the show also. So that is something yeah. that, that you guys should be aware of that you will work with you in the office, we'll help you make sure that yeah. those things get done. That'll be perfect. That'll be perfect. And that's generally the best thing to do is if everybody works together, you can get that done. And again, you know, you talked about how do we know who's is who's? Well, um, we'll have tags that we can send over to Brandy and those, tag, those birds can be tagged, uh, you know, the morning of or the night before and put on the trailer, get all that stuff and registration done. And, and really, if you have one person that's willing to bring them, uh, need to even have everybody come unless you'd like to just see the plant really quickly or whatever you don't you don't even need to have everybody come to deliver them again it's just the only requirement is that you're there for the, for the sale any other questions yeah i have one more question um sure. what is target size weight for a hand um versus a 
um, male, the tom. So that's a really good question. Now these these birds they can grow really well. If you're if you're wanting to um, you know get some pretty big birds to be able weight to be able to sh to sail or to be even included in the show is you've got to have a hen. You've got to have a tom that's above sixteen. So you've got to at least have a 16 pound tom to be able to consider, be considered for judging. Now on average, I see hens, <clears throat> that, again, that's minimum, but you're gonna see hens that'll come in um, more in the 16 to 18 pound range. And then it's not uncommon for people to feed to have hens by that processing, like final processing week to have hens that are averaging around 20. Um, the toms, um, it's not uncommon to see a really average, good, decent sized tom coming in um, in the 24 to 26 pound range. But we'll have our heavy, heavy toms and uh, that'll be up above 30. And that's dressed. So those are the in the bag weights. That's Is there uh, too big? Or is, you know, is, is it caps at a certain weight? Nope. Big. Okay. No such thing as too big. And Christine says, want, love to know how to feed them to get the heavyweight category. Um, everyone that I've talked to, everything that I've talk, taught you and talked to you about really what, what they're doing. The only other thing that I've heard that's, that's a trick is they, feed them multiple times or put their feet in multiple times. And what that does is it just gets them up and gets them to eat more. But that's, that's really where, where the difference is. And again, um, just being able to feed them and making sure that feeds in front of them and giving them shelter and space to move around. Those are the types of things that, that really make a difference. He just asked, is there a weight limit? And, the, and there's not, there's the minimum. Now, um, so the processing, uh, the, the, those other days that we talked about right in, right in through here, um, there is no, no weight consideration. Again, they need, to be, they need to be processed. That's a part of the requirements. So whether they're big or small, that's when they need to be processed. Um, could you feed them veggies? Hey, yeah. I, yep. Oh, go ahead. Um, so what is the minimum minimum weight for a tom? So for a tom, when they're when they're harvested and they're and they're weighed, their carcasses weighed, it has to be above sixteen pounds. Is that like a tom? Like a okay, tom thank tom? you. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. So here it talks about. There was a question about could you feed them veggies? Yeah, you can. Uh, around and they like to they like to be curious but you, you also want to be careful if you want to treat every now and again if you're really wanting to get them to that heavy weight category or gaining you want to have them on that total that turkey feed because that's going to give them all the stuff that they need to, to get going and, and be successful if they're you know it'd be such a salad right um it might fill us up but might not have the caloric new and things like that to, to make some weight gain happen. So yeah, you know, I, I know my kids, when they go out, they'll throw a couple of things to them, just as little treats or whatever, but you don't want to base them off. You want to make sure that they're on that total mixed ration to be able to be competitive and, and gain how you see them gain. It's a good question. One more question. Sure. The cooler temperatures or the cold, um, a concern for the Rich County temperatures and stuff you know um it actually is probably going to be an advantage for you in the beginning uh, for brooders i think they're going to grow really well in fact wasatch county uh tends to have one of the growing that mountainous type of higher elevation uh in fact they um they have started uh they have their own county sale and show and they've started ordering their poults all two weeks behind the regular ones because they they just were being so successful, big birds. And so they, they had their consumers there in the county that just didn't want to uh, 
they they didn't want to buy that big of a bird anymore and so they they made that that decision to switch it hurts them to be competitive in the state show because the birds are maybe a little bit small they're processing that last week uh they they've made that decision to to do that now some of the things that you do have to be mindful of is if it starts to freeze and uh, things, you know, you want to have the bedding, some straw, we'll throw straw bales in and, and warm. Uh, the other thing that you want to be really conscientious of is making sure that they have fresh water that's not frozen. So you might get, um, you know, you might get a uh, stock tank heater or you might get, uh, we, we've even uh, went as by, uh, you can buy those uh, inexpensive uh, cat and dog uh, water dishes that you can plug in. Um, at that point, when the birds are that big, you don't necessarily need to be using the the smaller poultry waters. Um, you can use a more of a substantial watering system. It's just when they're little, you've got to make sure they can't drown. So, so the temperature being cold, the biggest thing is is make sure they have some straw to get into, some shelter to get under. They don't want them out in the open where there's rain and snow and problems that way. Um, but uh, in fact, they uh, they not intentionally had something happen quite a few years ago. One of the pens had a creek that ran through it or by it, and the creek didn't freeze, but the other pen next to it, um, they were having to wait for the kid to get home and break the ice and and they just happened to notice a difference in the growth of the birds. And this was in the last week, week and a half before processing. They found that just by having the fresh water from that creek that those constantly access, they dressed out in that time frame three pounds heavier than those that were waiting on water. So again, that, that fresh water. It looks like Christine says that they learned to lock them up in a shelter so they'll fly up high and uh, where the turkeys will fly up high and stay out out in the storm that's right they'll they they get really confused they're special little birds and if they can't get out of the weather and be locked up they they can um they can smother themselves trying to get out they they'll sometimes even set out in the in the cold and they'll end up freezing so you got to be really careful that you make sure they can get in under something and again ability to to have a big open pen during the day that they can be in and then a safe, secure shelf in just from predators and weather and everything, all of the above. Questions? Anybody else have any other questions? Well, I'll tell you what, I am, very grateful for the opportunity to have spent some time with you tonight. And um, we are always, always, always available to help answer any questions that you might have, whether it's raising turkeys or participating in the show or in the sale or whatever it is that you would like to do. Absolutely more than welcome at any time to reach out to us. Uh, this is a really, really fun project. And um, in fact, you know, we, we raise a lot of different livestock and um, this is this is really one of my family's favorite things to do is to raise turkeys. My wife just absolutely loves them. I wish that she would love raising sheep as much as turkeys, but um, it's a fun family thing, and they are funny. They're fun to raise. At our house, they do a special. My kids and my wife will do a special little call, and they'll come running out of the turkey house and gets excited and flap their wings, and it's kind of a it's kind of a really fun project super huge time commitment um it's just a just a fairly simple straightforward project so we really encourage you to be involved in it and again reach out at any point okay. excuse me yes do we have to put in our names and what county we're in and whether we're in ffa or 4-h in this meeting you know what brandy are you taking are you taking credit rolls tonight for this one Yes, I am. So if, yep. if you will please do that. Um, if you are from another county and you want this to count towards a meeting, um, go ahead and, and put that in there also and we'll make sure it gets to your agent. 
Appreciate everybody joining tonight. I'm going to stop the recording and then.